so we were discussing the seismic analysis and design of buildings using ibc 2021 uh, which is also adopted in the building code of pakistan 2021 and uh, obviously ibc 2021 we know that it refers to asc 7 for many of its provisions and uh, the selection of design loadings so we started that discussion with uh, some basic concepts and uh, the first task was the selection of analysis procedure seismic analysis procedure so let me directly go to the point where we ended last time we actually discussed that uh, these are some of the basic input information uh, which we must know before we start that seismic analysis procedure according to ibc 2021 or uh, which is now the building code of pakistan 2021 so once we have all of this basic input information uh, we can start this uh, step step wise process which is common to all seismic analysis procedure which means that before we actually uh, finalize or decide that the analysis procedure we have to adopt we must pass through these uh, first few steps and then finally we reach to a point where we select the seismic analysis procedure whether it is the equivalent static analysis procedure or the response spectrum analysis or the time history analysis so these are the common steps for all seismic analysis procedures the basic input information some of them will come from for example geotechnical investigation report site class and some are related to the conception of your building uh, obviously uh, the architect will have its his own role in that and uh, the structural systems gravity load resisting system and the later load resisting systems so once we have that all basic info, uh, information uh, then we can start this process of the selection of seismic analysis procedure the first step was the selection of the risk category of the building De depending upon the intended occupancy of the structure uh, we go to this table 1.5-1 uh, this is that table in asc 7-16 asce 7-16 table 1.5-1 uh, actually list down the four risk categories 1 2 3 and this one fourth one and uh, the use of occupancy use or occupancy of buildings and structures they are described on the left column so if the building or structure uh, which represents a low risk to human life in the event of failure uh, we may assign it with a risk category of 1 for example a warehouse or a structure where no one actually resides similarly on the other side essential facilities uh, they will be assigned with a risk category of 4 and the description of all those facilities and those occupancy uh, information is listed down here then three is the buildings and other structures the failure of which could pose a substantial risk to human life so if your building is uh, having this occupancy type that if it fails it poses a significant uh, risk to human life you can assign it to a risk category of 3 and uh, if there is a structure which uh, cannot be assigned to 1 3 or 4 you assign it to a risk category of 2 so that's how you assign a risk category to your building based on its occupancy based on its intended use whether it it is an important structure or it is uh, a relatively less important structure where uh, the failure of the structure may not pose a significant threat to the life of uh, the occupants once you establish the risk category then uh, the step 2 is actually you determine the ground motion parameters ss and s1 and they will be for your site at which your structure will be located and uh, these uh, ss and s1 parameters are uh, actually taken from 
these figures for us from asc 7-16 they are the hazard maps uh, and they are uh, actually giving us the values for short period spectral acceleration and long period spectral acceleration from asc 7-10 onwards uh, they are defined as risk targeted maximum considered earthquake mcer spectral response acceleration parameters for short period and for one second ss and s1 so from asc 710 onwards we have mcer values for ss and s1 prior to that we used to have simple mce uh, for ss and s1 and mce is defined as uh, the earthquake with a return period of 2, 4, 7, 5 years uh, which is also equivalent to a 2% probability of exceedance in 50 years. But from ASC 710 onwards there is an additional modification which is performed on the original MCE values and that modification is based on the risk associated to the buildings designed on this hazard level. So based on a target risk value which is 1% probability of collapse in next 50 years. Based on that risk, the original MCE values are modified by a risk factor and then we get the MCE R, SS and S1. So the summary is that you need to have the hazard maps for your study area and from those maps you will pick your SS and S1 and they should conform to uh, these definitions. The next step is that you modify those SS and S1 uh, for the site effect. Uh, the FA and FV are the site coefficients. FA depend on SS value and FV depend on S1 value. And obviously they will be the function of your site class. That is an information which you will already be having. So using your site class and your hazard parameters, you will use these two tables to pick FA and FV values. Then you multiply them uh, with your hazard parameters, FA with SS and FV with S1 to finally get the site modified spectral acceleration values. So SMS and SM1 are the site modified values. Obviously if FA and FV are more than one, which means that your soil type is going to amplify your ground motion parameters. And if it is less than one, which means it is going to de-amplify. So these are the hazard maps for Pakistan. Uh, these are the MCE values. MCE values, not MCER values. So strictly speaking, they are not exactly conforming to the definition of IBC 2021. Uh, so they are conforming to a previous definition of hazard, uh, which is the original MCE value, 2, 4, 7, 5 years return period which is also uh, the 2% probability of exceedance in 50 years exposure time. So uh, the values are shown here with different colors here. The red color means that the SS value is greater than 1.8. Similarly, different shades of different colors are showing uh, the values here. Uh, for tabular values, you can go to this link or I will also show in some next set of slides those tabular values for different cities. So you can see here that uh, uh, the hazard is uh, almost uh, having the same pattern as the seismotectonic setting or active crustal faults in the country. This is the map for S1, long period spectral acceleration which is the spectral acceleration at one second time period. So this map is telling you the response acceleration of single degree of freedom systems having a time period of one second at different locations of uh, your country uh, when those single degree of freedom systems are subjected to a future earthquake uh, which is having a 2% probability of exceedance in 50 years ex exposure time uh, which also corresponds to 2, 4, 7, 5 years of return period. So these values here, uh, according to this legend, the red color corresponds to uh, an S1 value of uh, greater than 0 0.55. And uh, you can see here that uh, uh, there is a yellow color here, which is corresponding to uh, the near fault areas. 
uh, red color here you know that there is a big fault uh, and there are several strike slip faults here in the south of Pakistan. Similarly in the northern region there are many active crustal faults and therefore we get a high hazard value as a result of PSHA uh, in the northern part of the country. So again for the uh, tabular values of S1 you can go to this link and check uh, the representative value for different cities. These are the tables for uh, site coefficients from uh, IBC 2021 or uh, BCP 2021. So from these tables you will pick your FA factor or FV factor uh, depending upon the site class here and your SS value you will pick the uh, FA factor. Obviously for example an FA factor of greater than 1 means that uh, your uh, soil is going to amplify the effect of ground shaking. So the soil modified spectral acceleration will be more than the original SS because SMS is equal to FA times SS. Similarly here SM1 soil modified spectral acceleration for one second time period is FV times S1. So any value greater than 1 is going to amplify the effect of ground shaking. Any value lower than 1 is going to de-amplify. So depending upon the hazard level on this scale and the soil quality or soil stiffness on this scale, you pick this number. And uh, for some cases, uh, the code is referring to another section which is actually uh, asking for the site specific analysis. Mostly for site class E in some cases, high hazard areas in site class E and for all of the site class F, it recommends the site specific analysis which means the site response analysis. So you actually perform that detailed procedure to quantify how much uh, is the amplification you may expect in these two cases. Site class E with SS greater than or equal to 1 G and for all of the site class F. So uh, just a quick reminder, site class A is a very hard rock, B is a, a rock site, C is a very stiff soil, then D is uh, stiff soil and then E is loose soil deposit, F is very loose soil uh, and sometimes it may also have an organic material also. So as we are, we are going down, the stiffness of soil is reducing and therefore for very loose and loose soils code is recommending to go for the site response analysis or site specific analysis to quantify the factor. So in some cases you can see here that uh, for uh, low hazard sites and site class E the code is recommending an amplification of around 4.2 times. So SM1 will be 4.2 times of S1 in this particular case right. So for many cases uh, we will get an amplification factor from these two tables but for some cases we must go for site, site specific ground motion procedure. So we may end up in actually uh, modeling our site and providing it an input shaking at its base and getting uh, an output shaking at the top. Uh, and then the ratio of these two shakings is actually the amplification factor. Then next step, uh, actually uh, one last subset in this uh, step two is to bring those MCE values to the design level. And the design level is defined as 2 by 3 of the MCE values. So SMS is converted to SDS, design level short period spectral acceleration modified uh, uh, according to the site class already. Similarly, SD1 is the uh, design level uh, long period spectral acceleration, one second spectral acceleration, uh, which is uh, modified already uh, by the site class. So finally, at the end of this step two, we will be getting SDS and SD1. These are the two modified hazard parameters and they are modified uh, for two reasons. One is that they are included now the effect of site class amplification or deamplification 
and second is that they are reduced to the design level so they are no more mc level now they are uh, reduced to uh, 2 by 3 which is the design level the next step is the determine determination of importance factor and that is the function of risk category which we have already selected so uh, we can also perform this step directly after step 1 that go to table 1.5-2 the very next table after the risk category and based on our risk category we pick the importance factor so i will show you that table maybe yes in this slide so this is table 1.5-2 the importance factor by risk category of buildings for different loadings snow importance factor ice and similarly last is the seismic so for risk category 1 and 2 uh, the importance factor is 1 and for risk category 3 it is 1.25 and for risk category 4 essential facilities it is 1.5 so as our risk category is increasing our importance factor is also increasing importance factor will have uh, an important role later in all the seismic analysis procedures similarly risk category also will have an important role in all seismic analysis procedures so we will select this importance factor as this step 